So it's that time of year again where YouTuber's Secret Santa is happening. Which we basically pick a name out of the hat, build something for them, and then do a video on them. Now I've got to remember for a recap of the past what has actually happened. In the first year I made a free-headed Furby for the Hacksmith, and I received some dancing shoes from Kids Invent stuff. The following year I made a cat synthesizer for a Stephanie Explains It All, and received from Colin Furs the bass jacket, which was a really loud, heavy set of speakers in a trench coat. Magnifique. And then last year I built for this old Tony an electromechanical light show, and received the masterpiece that was the butt synth from hell from the tested crew. Well this year I still don't yet know what I'm going to be getting and hopefully it's in the post somewhere and you'll see by the end of this video fingers crossed it turns up. But what I do know is I need to make something for Kids Invent Stuff which is a YouTube channel that brings kids inventions to life and likely the video will be just after this one on the playlist because there's a playlist if you don't know and it goes through in order. One gets built, one gets posted, one gets built, one gets posted and blah de blah de blah right around in a circle. You see the other day I drove down to Lewis in a van to pick up the mother load of flip dot displays from a lovely person called Andrew. You'll be seeing more of these flip dot displays at the start of next year because we're going to turn the whole of the front of the museum basically into a big flip dot screen. But the best way to start a project is to start small and I've come up with an idea today that might be pretty funky for kids invent stuff. However firstly I think we need to look closer at a single flip dot. Flip dots if you're not aware became popular in the 80s and 90s and you still see them today on the front of buses in train stations and stuff like that to display information. They're a low power alternative to illuminated screens using stuff like LEDs and things. Within themselves there is no illumination but if you see I can turn it from a yellow to black by literally flipping this pixel right here. And what is best of all is when loads of these are running you hear that characteristic flip dot sound because they do make quite a bit of a racket. There's a couple of advantages that flip dot displays have over illuminated displays. Number one, it's more visible in the daylight. Imagine if you've got bright sun shining at it. Well, you can have a better time distinguishing between this bright yellow front and this absolutely pitch black black background over an LED display or something like that. And also the other advantage is they don't need constant power to show an image because it has magnetic memory. When you flip the poles inside of it, they'll stay flipped until you flick them back. There's only two wires that go to a flip dot and these wire to these two coils on the back of it. These two coils have the ability of changing the magnetic pole in the flip dot itself. The top of the flip dot can come out and this is magnetic and it'll either be attracted or repelled from the magnetic field coming from within. Here's one of the display boards that I picked up from Andrew and like I said to control one of them is quite simple. The flip dot only has two connections and I've wired two wires to each of those right here. If we get the wires and put them on a battery really quickly you'll see it'll flip the poles and it'll also flip the pixel. You twist the battery around and you do the same thing. It'll do that. Oy! Oh yeah. <laughs> There's a slight issue here, if we have loads of them and we have to switch the polarity all the time, it gets quite complicated circuitry wise. It's basically looking for an electronic potential difference between two points, be that a battery with a plus and a minus, we could actually use three wires. We've got ground on the grey wire, we've got 5 volts on the purple wire and we've got 10 volts on the red wire. We're going to get one of the two wires from the flip dots and we're going to put it in the middle one, this is the 5 volts. Now watch what happens when I touch the ground and I touch the 10 volts and I touch the ground and I touch the 10 volts and the ground and the 10 volts and the ground and the 10 volts. You'll see that I'm able to change the pixel just changing one wire. This is because when I touch the ground wire the potential difference is between 5 volts and ground. So the magnetic orientation will cause it to go to the black side. However when I connect it to the 10 volts it goes between the 5 and the 10. That's the potential difference and it ends up flipping it again. The 5 volts powers all of the circuitry that you see around the outside. However, it also acts as that central wire in the demonstration earlier. It's got the ability to flick through rows and columns to select the pixel that you want to select. If we were going to plug this into a controller, that would mean we could select each of the dots that we want to turn on and off to say something like a smiley face. Or next stop, Yeovil City Centre or something like that. Even though every single selection is only a nanosecond, it will still take a relatively long time to draw an image on this. That's why when you see these on the front of buses, you don't see it update straight away you see it updating bit by bit 
So to make the flip dots do what we want to make them do for the front of the museum, we need to somewhat rethink the electronics that are going on around the outside. However, the way this works got me thinking about a fun little project that we could do today. So on the back of the board, there's a connector input. These would be used to plug in control devices to control these things. However, I've quickly bashed together this, which is basically a breakout module for this. So we're gonna plug that into here. And a few of these pins, if you send five volts into them, what they'll do is either advance the row, the pixels, in the row advance the column going down let's advance the row a little bit oh oh hey 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 there we go so we can sort of control it a little bit i'm just soldering on a socket for an arduino nano i'm making this up as i go so it looks a bit messy on this piece of strip board that's for sure And here we have it. We've got the Arduino right here. It's going into the on and off input of the display. And I've basically got an Arduino sketch which turns on and off those inputs and it makes it go like this. Of course, by simply updating the Arduino sketch like this, we could speed it up a little bit. Look at that, it's doing it now. And if I get a wire going to the other inputs to adjust the coordinates, hopefully it'll do something different. There is something. So now we've got the pixels flicking on and off. What we're going to do is we're going to get the row advance and the column advance, basically the coordinate inputs, and wire those into the Arduino as well. And then we're going to have a mess around and see if we can get it doing anything funky. Oh, we're getting, we're deleting it all. The Nectar Sketch is a perfect way of using the already built-in circuitry because you can flick along columns and rows. And since you last saw me, that's pretty much what I've done. We've got four simple controls, up, down, left, right, reset, and right the dot yellow and right the dot black. Get it plugged in. <gasps> Ooh. The first thing you'll notice is not all of the flip dots turn on at the same time. That's because it's not optimized to be used this way, it's optimized to be used this way. Now as you can see, it works much better, except for that one dead pixel. What is going on there? Oi! Oh, that's a slow one. And then we can turn separate ones on and off, flick over, get another one, and oh, oh, we're going backwards. This is really hard to do with your hands just on here like that. And just write a whole load of them. Um... I definitely need to make the firmware for the Arduino a little bit more interesting, but it's gonna do for now, and I'll send them an email of something to upload a little bit later. Because the clock is seriously ticking, I've got about two hours until I absolutely have to post this. We're gonna put it into a box to make it look nice and neat. We're gonna use this, which is an old top from an old tool chest. Right, let's see how we can wire this in with minimal disruption. And then I'm gonna plonk this up here. I feel like I should have used bigger switches or buttons, but hindsight is a beautiful thing, isn't it? Lovely. Oh yes, it is now done. I really don't want to send it now because I really quite like it. Especially in this box, it looks really quite fetching. Well, it works. It's a little bit clunky. I need to send this within the next hour, so I haven't got enough time to improve the code. But I'm gonna do that by building another one and we'll have a look at making the code a little better because yeah, I've run out of time on this. It's definitely good enough to play some games and stuff, that's for sure. Oh, I love it. It's so cool. Ooh! 
kids in Wunsch stuff. Let's just leave that. The great thing is if I unplug it and I post it like that, it's not gonna come undone because it's permanently like that. That's gonna be nice, yes. So let's get this in the post. Oh, what's that? It must be somebody at the door. If it's here, it's here, it's here. Oh my gosh, this old Tony has made something for me. If you're not aware, I made this old Tony a present last year. Let's have a look, see. Oh, oh what the hell? Let's just tear it. Wow, for a second, I thought that was completely custom, but it's got the this old, that is very genius. Are you excited as me? I don't think so, let's have a look. Du, 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 du. Oh yeah, some stickers. Oh, that is a very nice screwdriver. It's even got my name on it. <gasps> I've been hankering after some decent flat point screwdrivers for a long time. Oh, that looks a lot crisper than this one. So if you're not already aware, I've been making videos about sorting out this church organ at the museum for the past, I don't know, five or six months. The next video is working on the console. But something that's been a bane of this project from the start is the fact that it's all flat screws. I could have in hindsight swapped them all, but that just, you don't want to do that. It's, you want, it's annoying. So these, uh, a blooming perfect for this and the telephone exchange. So let's uh, give them a go, shall we? Oh, I don't want to break them. They are quite hard, so I don't want to. Oh, 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 yeah. These are really, really hard. Tony did mention that they may shatter, so you've got to be careful. Oh, these screwdrivers are too small for those screws. Here's the electromechanical regenerator machine from the other week. This is what they were made for as it was inspired by the slightly chuffed up flat head screws on the present that I gave him the other time. So <laughs> it's pretty funny, but it's true. Oh, 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 gosh damn. Oh, oh baby. That is, that is proper. Also, there's some wire strippers on the back. Let's give that a go. Oh no, I'm, I'm the wrong handed. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure this out. Uh, Swap it around. Oh, oh, there we go. Let's give this a go. Let's pop it on the big one. <gasps> Ooh. Wow, that does it really well. That's way better than my teeth do it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, this old Tony, for these. They're absolutely amazing. There's nothing quite like some good proper tools, and especially the ones that have been handmade by a craftsman like yourself. These are definitely going to be in my toolbox, most likely until I conk it, which is hopefully quite a way off yet, but you never know. Thank you, they're absolutely beautiful. If you'd like to see how this old Tony has made these screwdrivers, then click into the video in a second, because it's the next one in the Secret Santa playlist. And Merry Christmas and all that jizz jazz, and have a lovely time. And remember, don't, don't be scared to try it. Maybe don't try and make an organ in the cold.